it's a very important question to try to address and understand how multiple myeloma may present differently in white patients and black patients or African-Americans. Um, there are some key differences that um, exist when we talk about just disease behavior or characteristics between the two groups. So for example, in African-Americans or blacks, uh, myeloma tends to present at a much younger age. In fact, studies have shown that it could be, say, about even an average five-ish years younger. Uh, the multiple myeloma incidence, which means the rate at which it occurs, is it's twice as uh, common in African-Americans or blacks as compared to whites. Now, that said, still the largest group of uh, patients in the U.S. is whites because of just sheer numerical differences. But it is uh, diagnosed at a younger age and at a higher rate. Uh, you can also imagine that younger age means that it is going to affect a certain different socioeconomic demographic of the population, so working population versus not. So uh, the average age at diagnosis for myeloma overall is about 68, 69 years. But for African-Americans, it tends to occur at about uh, closer to 63, so early 60s instead. Furthermore, we've done studies in the past looking at large national databases of presentation and some clinical characteristics. And even after controlling for all other socioeconomic demographic factors, we found that myeloma presents with more clinical symptoms in African-Americans at the time of diagnosis. And these are typically the myeloma defining events, which are also known as the CRAB criteria. So C is in the CRAB is calcium or increased calcium level. R is renal dysfunction or kidney dysfunction. A is anemia and B is bone disease or bone lesions. So out of all of these, the increased calcium, anemia, kidney dysfunction, and in fact, even need for dialysis, kidney dialysis at the time of presentation is significantly more common in African-Americans. Bone disease or bone lesions or bone fractures are actually the opposite in which they are seen less frequently in blacks at the time of myeloma diagnosis. And that could primarily be just because uh, the genetics of bone uh, formation and uh, the characteristic of bone density is that bones tend to be more dense in African-Americans or Blacks, so bone disorders from myeloma tend to be seen less frequently at the time of diagnosis. Now, I should also add that in that same study where we looked at thousands of patients out of the national data, we even looked at patients after they had started treatment for myeloma, and within the first year after even starting the treatment for myeloma, Black patients are more likely to um, be affected by increased calcium, kidney dysfunction, need for dialysis, and anemia from the myeloma. Now, the implications of this, I can say, are that those patients may need more dose reductions. They may not be able to get access to certain drugs because of kidney dysfunction or just comorbidities, et cetera. Um, I think the last thing I would add related to this, which is not just the differences, but why these differences occur. So it has been hypothesized that it is possible African-Americans or Blacks get access to care later. So their disease may be more advanced at the time it is diagnosed. Now that can certainly be present and it is obviously a very complex um, socio-demographic economic web of factors that could lead to this. But it is important for us to know that the presentation and effect of treatments or even effects on the body even after starting treatments could be different in blacks versus whites. We talk about the differences in clinical characteristics between blacks and whites and even I would say Hispanics. But it is also an implication of that is also that how is a clinician supposed to take into account these differences and how could the myeloma care be impacted because of these differences? So as a clinician who's focused on myeloma, I am obligated to not only understand that clinical characteristics may be different between whites and blacks and Hispanics, but I should also take them into account when deciding the treatment for the patient. 
So over the past, uh, I would say nearly a decade, our treatment paradigm for myeloma has shifted so that now we consider treating the patients a bit sooner or earlier before damage occurs to the body. At the same time, I mentioned previously that myeloma can present with more symptoms or at a slightly advanced stage in African-Americans as compared to whites. So when we see a newly diagnosed patient with myeloma, and if it is an African-American, and if there are more symptoms associated with it, we should automatically consider that the treatments to be used, the drugs to be utilized, need to be such that they provide an effective, deep response, hence the need for a triplet or quadruplet regimen. So more evidence-based treatment that needs to be brought in quickly so that the patient's disease can be controlled faster. So there's more disease burden. You need more effective drugs to provide appropriate benefit. At the same time, African-Americans or Blacks can have more kidney dysfunction associated with um, myeloma or more anemia associated with myeloma. So initially, we may need to do some dose adjustments of the regimens to be able to accommodate for organ dysfunction that can be seen more frequently in Black patients at the time of myeloma presentation. But once we have controlled the disease enough, and let's say if the kidney function has improved or the anemia has improved, then we should try our best to optimize those doses and regimens so that the most appropriate, effective dose of the um, regimen can be provided to patients. So not only are we picking the right treatment, we have to tailor it and use it for the right dosage. But once we start achieving some benefit from it, we need to be able to optimize or maybe even consider escalating the dose to the appropriate dose so that the patients can continue to derive appropriate benefit from the regimen.